Greetings everybody, welcome back to With All Left Wisdom. So far I've been your host, Zero Yeti, and happy Dinosaur Day. I believe this is the fifth Dinosaur Day we've done. And in this episode we're going to be focusing on the Maverno Formation of Late Cretaceous Madagascar. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first and only being Masiakasaurus, which is a genus of small predatory noosaurid theropod dinosaur, which lived throughout what is now Madagascar, during the late Cretaceous period, obviously, some 70 to 66 million years ago, the first remains of Masiakasaurus, consisting of some vertebrae, parts of the arms, high limbs, and pelvis, and parts of the skull, were unearthed at the Maverino Formation near the village of Berivoltra uh, in northwestern Madagascar. Said material was described and named in 2001 by Scott D. Sampson, Matthew Carano, and Catherine A. Forster who dubbed the animal Masiakasaurus, which translates to vicious lizard in the Malagasy language. The species name, Knopfleri, was named after the musician Mark Knopfler, whose music the exhibition crew would listen to while they worked to dig up the skeleton. In 2011, additional specimens of Masiakasaurus were discovered, which filled in some of the gaps of the initial skeleton. Masiakasaurus was a small bipedal theropod, Reach around 5.9 to 6.9 feet, or 1.8 to 2.1 meters in length, and weighed roughly 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. The most distinctive characteristic of Masiakasaurus was its four projecting or percumbent t- front teeth. Uh, these teeth were heterodont, meaning that they were different shapes along the jaw, and the first four dentary teeth on the lower jaw projected forward with the first tooth angled only 10 degrees above horizontal. These teeth are long and spoon-shaped with hooked edges. This unique detention did d de- sorry, I keep saying detention, uh, dentition, suggests that they had a specialized diet likely based on small, tough prey like shellfish, armored fish, and other small armored prey, and possibly even fruits and nuts if it may have been her- omnivorous. Next up, we have Falcata Kelly, or Falcata Kelly. It is an extinct genus of, I can never say this word right, an Antiorothenian bird, which lived throughout the late Cretaceous Madagascar some 70 to 66 million years ago. The first remains of Falcata Kelly, consisting of a mostly complete skull and some fragmentary postcranial remains were described in 2020 by Dr. Patrick O'Connor and his team, who named the animal Falcata Kelly forestria, meaning small scythe from the Latin falcatus and the Malagasy Kelly, in reference to the shape of the animal's beak. Uh, reaching around 1.5 feet or 40 centimeters in length, it was roughly the size of a modern crow. Like other enantiornithinians, Falcata Kelly likely sported claws on their wings and ribbon-like display feathers on their tails instead of lift-generating fans found in most birds today. Most notably, Falcata Kelly had a long, tall snout, very similar in shape to a modern toucan's. Unlike any other known Mesozoic bird, the surface and texture of the bones indicating that it was covered by a keratinous beak, but despite this very modern face shape and bone alignment, it was still much more similar to any other in Antiornithinians. Uh, there was a huge toothless maximal maxilla making up the majority of the beak with a small tooth bearing premaxilla at the tip. Falcata Kelly is known from the Maverno Formation, which was then a floodplain, which seasonally altered between being swampland in the wet season and a dry woodland and scrubland during the dry season. Here, Falcata Kelly probably fed upon fruits, nuts, insects, and other invertebrates, alongside many other unusual animals such as Simosuchus, Beelzebufo, Masiakasaurus, Areposuchus, and Majungasaurus. Next up, we have Vintana, uh, which is a genus of early Gondwanatherian mammal which lived throughout what is now western Madagascar during the Cretaceous period some 76 million years ago. First remains of Ventana, uh, consisting of an incredibly well-preserved skull, were discovered in a slab of rock, which also sported a plethora of fish, reptile, and invertebrate fossils from the Maverno Formation in 2010. 
lay a team of, led by paleontologist David Cross. After years of careful extraction and detailed description, the animal is officially named Ventana Sertichi, uh, with Ventana meaning luck in the Malagasy language, referring to the fortuitous circumstances behind how it was found. Uh, Vitana was and still is an extremely important creature to the understanding of Guadana theorians uh, because it represented the first member of the group that was well known for more than just teeth and bone fragments. Vitana helped establish a connection between Gondwana theorians and multituberculates slash uh, Haramidians or Hamadians Haramidians of the theriform clade Allotheria. Ventana is a rather unusual animal, possessing massive lateral flanges on its skull, whose exact purpose is poorly understood, as well as massive olfactory bulbs, reaching around 20 pounds or 9 kilograms in weight and around 2.5 feet or 0.76 meters in length. It was a rather large herbivorous mammal for the time, and may have been similar in appearance and lifestyle to a modern groundhog. Vitana represents the rare example of a considerably large Mesozoic mammal, alongside Aldalotherium, another Gondwana theor from the Malverno formation, and Repnomamus, a badger like animal from early Cretaceous China. Next up, and probably the main event for this episode, Majungasaurus, a large albilosaurid theropod dinosaur which lived throughout Madagascar during the late Cretaceous period some 70 to 66 million years ago, making it one of the last known non-avian dinosaurs uh, and it went extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. The first remains found of what we now know to be Majungasaurus, consisting of two teeth, a claw, and some vertebrae, were discovered along the Betsaboka River in northwestern Madagascar by French paleontologist Charles Deperet in 1896, who described them as a species of Megalosaurus. Deperet later re- reassigned the species to the North American genus Dryptosaurus. In 1995, René Lovacat described a theropod dentary with teeth from the Malverno formation was matched those described by Deperet but whose strongly curved jawbone marked as distinct from both Megalosaurus and Tryptosaurus. She dubbed this material as Majungasaurus, a combination of the older spelling of Mahajunga, as well as the Greek word Soros, meaning lizard. In 1979, Hans Dieter Sus and Felipe Taquet described a dome-shaped skull fragment as a new genus of Pachycephalosaur, which they dubbed Majungatholus. In 1996, a spectacularly complete theropod skeleton was unearthed whose jaws matched those of Majungasaurus, but whose skull roof matched that of Majungatholus. This prompted Majungatholus to be redescribed as a theropod in 1998. However, after nearly a decade of debate, the name Majungatholus was replaced by the older name Majungasaurus. From 2003 to 2005, half a dozen fairly complete skeletons were unearthed, making Majungasaurus one of the best studied and best represented dinosaurs from the southern hemisphere. Reach around 18 to 25, 23 feet, or 5.6 to, 5.6 to 7 meters in length, and 1,650 to 2,450 pounds in weight, or 750 to 1,100 kilograms in weight, Majungasaurus was one of the larger albilosaurs, and it shares the characteristic albilosaurid short, short, deep skull. Notably, it had a single small horn that rises from the top of the skull above where the eyes would be. This spike has been found to have been made of porous material, indicating that it was most certainly just for show and too fragile for combat. Majungasaurus was a bi- was bipedal with a long tail to balance out its head and torso. It had truly tiny arms, but incredibly muscular, large, and well-built hind limbs. In life, Majungasaurus would have been the dominant land predator of Madagascar, feeding upon sauropods, theropods, including other Majungasaurus in times of drought and famine, mammals, fish, lizards, snakes, amphibians, and crocodilomorphs. Next up, we have a creature with a fairly unfortunate name, Rapetosaurus, 
often incorrectly uh, called Raptosaurus, is an extinct genus of Titanosaurian sauropod dinosaur that lived in Madagascar at the end of the Cretaceous period some 70 to 66 million years ago. The first remains of Rapetosaurus, consisting of a skull of one adult, the limb bones and vertebrae of two other adults, and a near perfectly complete skeleton of a juvenile, were unearthed near the city of Mahajunga in northwestern Madagascar by a team led by David W. Cross in 1993. These specimens would be prepared, assembled, and described by Kristen Curry Rogers and Catherine A. Forster, who named the animals Repetosaurus, uh, which is derived from the Repeto, which was a giant deity in Malagasy folklore, credited for creating many of the geographical features of the land, such as valleys and mountains, and Soros, which is the Greek word for lizard. With the species named Crossy, referring to David W. Cross, reaching up to 55 feet or 16.5 meters in length and 11 tons or 10 metric tons in weight. Repetosaurus was one of, if not the largest land animal of Cretaceous Madagascar, but was still fairly small for a titanosaur, reaching less than half the size of its gigantic kin, like Argentinosaurus and Dreadnoughtus likely due to insular dwarfism. The skull of Repetosaurus is very much like that of Diplocodids and features teeth that are more suited for stripping fleshy vegetation such as leaves from branches as opposed to eating more woody vegetation. Uh, in life, Repetosaurus was the most numerous large herbivore throughout its range and would have lived and traveled in decent-sized herds in search of food, sharing its home with Gondwanatherian mammals, strange crocodilomorphs, early birds, large snakes, giant frogs, and other dinosaurs like the fellow sauropod uh, Vahini, and theropods like the previously mentioned Masiakosaurus, Majungasaurus, and Rohan Avis. Speaking of Rohan Avis, it is the next animal. Uh, Rohan Avis is a genus of bird-like theropods which lived throughout what is now northwestern Madagascar during the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous period some 72 to 66 million years ago. First remains of Rohan Avis a, include a partial skeleton cons consisting of the wings, hind limbs, torso, and portions of the tail. We're on Earth from rocks of the Mahaverano Formation near the village of Baribotra in a joint expedition of Sunny and the University of, and I'm sorry for probably butchering this, Ata, An, Anta Ana, Ana Rivo, led by Catherine Forster in 1995. Forster and the team found this Ronave, Rohan Avis skeleton amongst the remains of a much larger Repetosaurus which was revealed after a wildfire cleared much of the vegetation off a hillside. Forrester initially named it Rohana, but changed the name after discovering the name Rohana was already assigned to a genus of Lymantrid moths. The name Rohan Avis means cloud menace bird from the Malagasy Rohana, meaning cloud menace, and Latin, the Latin Avis, meaning bird. The specific name R. Ostromi was coined in honor of John Ostrom. In, since 1995, a dentary and vertebrae belonging to Rohan Avis have been recovered, but may belong to a different genus. Reaching around 27 to 32 inches in length, or 70 to 80 centimeters in length, and 1 to 5 pounds, or 0.5 to 2.3 kilograms in weight, with a 36 to 48 inch or 91 to 121 centimeter wingspan, Rohan Avis was a small predator comparable in size to a modern raven. It sported a long tail and a velociraptor-like raised sickle claw on the second toe. Despite not being a true bird, Rohan Avis does appear to have been capable of powered, albeit clumsy, flight. In life, Rohan Avis would have probably lived in pairs or in small groups, and fed upon insects, amphibians, early mammals, lizards, and other vertebrates, as well as possibly vegetable matter. And our final animal uh, from the Mahaverno Formation for now, because we've already covered Bielzobupo, Bufo, uh, Simosuchus, and Arepasuchus, is another crocodiliforf, Mahajungasuchus. 
In extinct genus of Notosuchian crocodiliform, which lived throughout Madagascar during the Maastrichtian stage of Late Cretaceous period, some 72 to 66 million years ago. First remains of Mahajungasuchus, consisting of a well preserved, disarticulated postcranial skeleton, discovered in 1995 by a team led by Dr. David Krauss near the village of Beravotra in western Madagascar. Initially, this specimen was believed to represent Thamatochamsa oblita, now Maria. Mia Dana Suchus oblata. However, finding of additional remains, including a skull, prompted further research by Dr. Buckley and Dr. Brochu, who concluded that these specimens represent a new genus of crocodilomorph, which they named Mahajunga Suchus in 1998. The generic name means crocodile from the Mahajunga Basin, in reference to the area where the fossils have been found in. Reaching upwards of 13 feet or 4 meters in length and 750 pounds or 340 kilograms in weight, Mahajungasuchus was roughly comparable in size to a modern American alligator. Its most notable feature is a robust, wide, rounded skull characterized by a strongly arched jugal, depressions beneath the orbit, a broad, platyrostral snout, massive chaconal septum, and a broad, rounded anterior edge of the dentary, as well as xiphodont teeth and a short mandibular symphysis. All, all of these factors indicate that Mahjongosuchus had an incredible bite force, possibly as high or higher than modern crocodiles. This suggests that it fed upon larger prey, such as turtles, snakes, other crocodile forms, and even dinosaurs, rather than smaller prey like fish and invertebrates. Although Notosuchians are notable for being, they're known for being the terrestrial croc family, Mahajungasuchus presents a stark deviation from this ecology by having evolved to become semi-aquatic ambush predators, which likely lived and hunted the rivers, swamps, and wetlands of Madagascar during the Mesozoic, now unlike modern now crocodiles do so today. As always, take care of my guys, gals, and my binary pals. I hope you enjoyed this episode and have a wonderful day.